I'm sorting standard. Woo, Berg. I'm sorting standard. I, whoa. Now there is a modern staple, if ever I saw one. Wedge, Wedge, I was just sorting through standard when I came across Arc Like Phoenix. This card is going to be great and modern, don't you think? Whoa, whoa, calm down, Professor. This isn't Wedge, this is Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. Um, wh what did you say about the smart line tweeny? I'm sorry, Wedge, you're breaking up or something. You're sounding very British and extremely silly. No, no, Arc Light Phoenix. It's got haste, it's a 3-2, it flies, and the art's okay. Uh, Professor, again, not Wedge, this is Vince, <laughs> and I am British, that might be why I'm... So anyway, I'm, I'm not so sure about Arc Light Phoenix, Professor. I mean, it's got it's got two toughness. It dies to everything. What? What? You can run this alongside young pyromancers. Hollow One. Think Hollow One. Run it in burn. This card is nuts. No, Professor, I'm being serious. It's, it's trash. It, it dies to removal. Are you insane? Are you hearing voices? Have you actually read the card? Because that explains the card. It has recursion, which means it comes back from removal. But, um, you know what happens the next time you bring it back, right? Uh, yeah, it attacks them. No, it just dies. It dies to removal. Again. Hello and welcome to Dies to Removal again and again and again. For those of you who don't know, Dies to Removal was a video podcast that I had with Wedge of the Mana Source many, many ancient years ago, and I've wanted very much to do another video podcast, and with Wedge's blessing, I was able to bring in my very good friend, Vince, otherwise known as Pleasant Kenobi. How you doing, Vince? I'm doing very well, thank you. I understand wanting to bring in a uh, more, uh, uh, an expert, shall we say, compared to Wedge. I mean, he doesn't really know what he's talking about, our Wedge, does he? He's a bit, he's a bit wet behind the ears, Wedge. So well, he's uh, very new to this all. He hasn't been doing it that long. No, but no, not at all. <laughs> yes, but actually we're really hoping that at some point we can uh, get him back on for a kind of dies to removal uh, reunion special episode or something like that. But in the meantime, we have our permanent co-host here in the form of Pleasant Kenobi. Uh, Vince, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself and where they can find you if they yes. like your stuff. So I, I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I am uh, from Britain, from England. So you might notice I've got a bit of a funky accent compared to the professor. Oh, that uh, explains you can... it. <laughs> you can find me over on uh, Pleasant Kenobi YouTube channel. Uh, Pleasant Kenobi on Twitter, Pleasant Kenobi on Instagram, Pleasant Kenobi on Facebook, but mainly uh, Twitch and uh, YouTube. I stream every Monday night, 7pm uh, our time, English time, and I make videos every single week of gameplay from modern to legacy, a little bit of standard here and there, a little bit of cube, a little bit of limited, but mainly modern and legacy because I just like playing with old cards that I really like. I can't argue that point. That's one of my favorite things to do with magic as well. And I'll be sure to include all the links to Vince's stuff uh, in the description of this video. So one more thing I want to talk about before we get started is just who are we and what are we doing in terms of dies to removal? Dies to removal, as far as I see it, is a casual podcast that keeps magic very serious. So I feel that I am a casual player at heart, and yet I do take Magic the Gathering, obviously, very seriously. <laughs> and there's a conception that casuals just don't care about being competitive, which I don't think is true. I'm very competitive when I play, that casuals are not entrenched in the lore or the current news or things like that. And actually, I'm very entrenched. I'd say that sometimes casuals are more entrenched in some of that stuff than pro players. And so I want to make a video podcast where Vince and I talk about all these things that interest us that maybe a lot of the professionally run sources of information and podcasts aren't talking about, and I'm very excited to get started with that. What do you see as the point of this video podcast, Vince? I'm actually, because we haven't really talked about that very much, I'm glad yeah. you sort of brought that up because 
I consider myself quite. I, I am a casual in a sense now. I, for what, where my background is, I was spy, I was trying to spike and trying to go to tournaments and win, and I was um, getting disillusioned with Magic because I just wasn't getting there in terms of like you know top eighting PPTQs or GPTs. I'd always miss out. I'd always bubble or I'd lose the final, and I'd, I'd never quite get there. Um, and then when I started just uh, trying to have more fun, playing more Commander, for example, brewing stupid decks and putting videos of, of them online, I started to enjoy Magic a lot more in a very different way. So it's something that I champion a lot on the channel is that Magic is different things to different people. And that doesn't mean you're any less invested in the game or, right. or less of a Magic player, per se, because there's the competitive side, but there's also just enjoying it with your friends, uh, the creative outlet of it, the fact that it is not only just an incredible strategy game, but like the, the, the fantasy realms that they explore with the story and the art is also like at the height of its game, if you will, in terms of like other games in similar styles. So Magic is lots of things to lots of people, so a podcast like this might not talk about the latest Pro Tour win, although of course you might touch upon it, but I'm glad you mentioned that because we hadn't even talked about that sort of that that ca casual element in a sense. All right, so let's move along to topic number one. We are going to be talking about post. Modern and by postmodern, what we mean is that there is possibly writing on the wall. Can modern, the format, sustain itself? Is this going to buckle in under itself? Do we need to have a new format as we've possibly already tried with Frontier? <laughs> we'll talk about that too. Uh, uh, but the idea is: is do we need a new? non-rotating format that isn't modern, that starts the card pool after modern so that people can have a format that doesn't rotate, but that perhaps does not fall into the same problems that modern has, or that uh, has pricing issues, or that has just rules issues with a lot of the cards that are modern legal, like Blood Moon and Ensnaring Bridge that make for, for terrible gameplay. Pros are always complaining about modern. So I've been hearing a lot of chat about postmodern. Uh, what have you heard about this? And what do you think about it, Vince? So I guess we, I think modern at the moment has a bit of um, a crisis, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, professional players don't like it. If you spend any time on Twitter, all you see right. is... They hate uh, it. The people that are, exactly. The people I know that grind uh, GPTs, PPTQs, RPTQs, etc. Those people really dislike it when it's modern season because modern is very, very swingy. Modern is determined by cyborg cards a lot of the time. And it's just really, really fast at the moment. So modern itself is having a crisis. Um, its prices are too high. The decks that are doing well are degenerate decks, and the fair decks don't really get much of a, a look right. in, bar maybe one or two of them. So when Modern is feeling that unhealthy, I guess it does lead to the question of, will something come after the fact? Will something come that will be Modern, but it will fix the problems Modern has? Lots of shuffling. Uh, the degenerate cards you mentioned, that seem to be around the 8th edition sort of period. Right. And I guess... It, and, and obviously, we're going to comment on it in a moment, I guess, but Arena also suggests that there will be some new non-rotating format. I guess Brawl was the prototype for that. But, but Brawl, Brawl isn't on it. Arena. And they said <laughs> yes. they said that Arena, they hinted anyway, I, uh, that Arena might not be able to handle Brawl, at least not as we know it, because Arena does not seem equipped for multiplayer, and Brawl is exactly. is multiplayer. Did we, I mean, did I miss it? Did we have 1v1 Brawl on Arena? I know we had Singleton. We have Singleton. Singleton. That's the closest you can get, is, is, is oh, 1v1. Oh, I thought there was a period where... Oh, I thought Brawl was available at one no, point. I missed. Appeared. There's never been Brawl, oh, and and wow. there was a, a kind of exasperated tweet. I'll, I'll see if I can dig it up. Where uh, someone from the arena team was like, "Look, it's not even something that that can easily be be done in terms of having Brawl." See, that that alarms me. That that to me that that screams of we've got arena being developed, and right. the the higher ups who don't understand Magic perhaps as much as they perhaps should do have gone. Okay, this 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 game's coming and the game is probably looking quite good people are, seem to be reacting to it well can we somehow implement something that takes us towards a newer format that we can perhaps monetize better than say commander for example because of the reserve list issues right and they've gone oh by the way can you implement this brawl thing and the developers have been like well actually this wasn't in the original mission document this wasn't in the original yeah. mission statement so no actually we can't and then we've got a situation where brawl now has been it's just sort of like slowly farted its way out of existence, hasn't it? it when, doesn't... when when we heard about, like, it's amazing to me uh, that when we heard about Brawl, and we're supposed to be talking about Brawl as the third topic, but whatever. Uh, 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 <laughs> and when we heard about Brawl, 
it was before Arena was even in open beta, and everyone said, oh my god, this is the commander-like format that was developed with Arena in mind. It made perfect exactly, sense. Arena exactly. is standard only. Everybody loves commander. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a kind of standard commander, and that'll go on Arena, and people can play it in paper, and it had a kind of elegance to it. And and even for those of us, like, I don't, I, I don't like Brawl personally, and we'll talk about that in, in a bit, but even for those of us who didn't like Brawl, it made perfect sense. I was a big advocate. There should be Brawl on Arena, even though it's not a format I personally oh, enjoy. And and then it's like, well, where is it? And then it didn't show up. And people kept asking and kept asking. And then finally, it's like, Brawl is not coming to Arena. And I don't believe Arena can support Brawl. And so you have two things going on. The first is not quite as alarming. The first is typical Wizards of the Coast, which is the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. So the left hand is making Arena. And it just so happens that in the the, the bowels of, of of the pit of R and D, they're coming up with this this new fun little format. Hey, this is fun. We're going to do this. We're going to do this little thing. And it just so happens that it really is completely independent of arena mm -hmm. and development. And the left hand never once spoke to the right hand. Or if they did, if they said, "Oh, we're also working on a format you might like," it just never the sensations never got there. And so Brawl just happened to come out right when Arena was getting all the hype, and it just seemed like such a good connection. But in fact, there's this big disconnect. Okay, we've seen that so, with Wizards so you're, you're a lot. You're framing it as coincidence <laughs> more so than my first yeah. thought was was conspiracy. I guess. Right. Everyone <laughs> thought it. Everyone <laughs> thought it. So I guess we've got a case of everyone. I just, but I just imagine. I imagine R and D has sat around playing because like, they framed it as a thing that R&D had been playing for a while as like a casual thing they enjoy in the office whether or not that's true who knows but no. I just imagine them at lunchtime playing Brawl in the cafeteria yeah, and right. some like head honcho of Hasbro walks through and goes what's this these cards all look like, oh yeah they're new cards they're the cards in the latest set it's like yeah. right ship it up and sell it out sure, and that's, sure. How, that's how Brawl got into the popular vernacular or got introduced by Wizards to the community but even if this but i see this is why i don't believe in conspiracy theories because you have to be really <laughs> intelligent and and well adept and like clever and and you have to know your stuff and like to pull off a conspiracy it's got to be like clockwork and that ain't wizards but anyway so even sure, if that was sure. this that doesn't alarm me because we've seen wizards do left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing tons of times but here is what concerns me they're developing arena all this money all this importance and if, and again, I am not saying that, that they confirm this. I don't know if it's confirmed. I think this is a good question to be asking about whether or not multiplayer is even possible on Arena. Whether or not there is a way that they built in and know how to do for there to be a three or four person magic game of any sort, be it Brawl, Commander, a new Melee format, whatever. Uh, and if the answer is Arena did not think to do multiplayer, then I'm astonished because there's no reason that there shouldn't be multiplayer on Arena. And, and if they're like, well, we could put it in, maybe we can build it in, but it's not currently built in. We're going to have to go from it's that to me is astonishing because Commander itself proves how much multiplayer is is desired by the fans, is loved by the fans. And the fact that even R&D on its own came up with a brand new uh, multiplayer format shows that multiplayer is a part of magic. And there's no reason why they shouldn't have said, make sure that we've got a good interface set up of the board switching around, swapping around, whatever, yeah, for multiplayer. Yeah. And I don't doubt that the software could handle a major, like it's supposed to be brilliant, mwah, chef's kiss software. But if they just went ahead and said, just, just, just put in 1v1 to start, Course, what an you, oversight. You, you what an with, oversight. You, you can tell with Magic the Gathering Online, for example, that the the interface is so... Because I play a lot of uh, Commander Online and EDH Online. Right. Um, but but the interface is so bad for that. You can tell it was nev that was not its original purpose. It's not fit for purpose. Right. So it's kind of funny, again, that they've now done the revamp to Magic the Gathering Online. Although they say they're both separate products, we know that Arena will inevitably eventually replace it as the mainstay of digital magic. But... 
they just didn't even think to put multiplayer in at all. Because I, I always thought that was, that was coming. But yeah, there was no official announcement about it. I'm surprised that Brawl was not on there at all. I thought Brawl was on there the period that I wasn't nope. playing Arena. They, 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 there's been no, there's no multiplayer huh. on Arena. Crazy. And I am pretty positive, And I really hope our viewers will prove me wrong because I'll be happy to be wrong on this. But that there is not a, a multiplayer capability uh, no, uh, there, currently well, no, the set up. There isn't, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I think that... that I think Brawl probably would have been less dead on arrival if, if there was something else to support it, like people with these extensive collections of arena cards that they can't play with. Because don't forget, that's kind of what Commander... All new players get into Commander because they want to play with these expensive, big, ra random rares and mythics, you know, seven mana, nine mana cards that they can't play in standard in the packs that they open up at their LGSs and stuff. Yeah, but so there's, Brawl, there's a Brawl reason... Is perfect for that. No, but see, okay, so I guess we're talking about Brawl instead of Postmodern. We'll get to Postmodern <laughs> a little later in the episode. But here's the thing. That is such baloney, that line that you're just saying, because I keep hearing it, well, play with the cards that you can't play with in Standard. The reason you cannot play with these cards in Standard is because they're bad cards. They're, oh, they of course, don't work. Of course. So, so, but you so can't, I'm not saying this, you can win with those cards. That's not what I'm saying. You can't I'm win saying, and brawl with those cards either. Exactly, exactly. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying oh, that okay. either. I'm saying I, that, I just, that's, that's the introduction to it. And then you suddenly learn that Soul Ring into Mana Crypt into efficient, powerful cards is the way to win. And then you're like, right. oh, yeah. my, my nine mana blue, six blue drops, five of a colorless octopus thing doesn't do anything. And this that, is that's where, how you learn yeah. and grow as a player. This is where a fundamental misunderstanding of casuals hurts the game because R&D looked at this and they said, well, sure, if you want to be a competitive spike about it, you can build brawl decks that, that absolutely stomp over all these other decks but they're like but casuals will just they'll just have fun no uh, you, screw <laughs> you i want to win and 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 people are still going to gravitate towards wanting to build decks that win casuals will still want deck lists from experts will still be talking with each other about cards that they play and if the card is trash the card is trash if the card is a less better and version that's part of why brawl died as well don't forget like when it was when it was available on magic the gathering Online, no one Played it was dominated it. by well, it was dominated by Burrell at first, right. and then everyone gave up. Right, because because people broke the format and fixed the format and solved the format, shall we say? Yeah. Um, immediately, because people weren't playing it for the casual fun of it. People were playing no. competitively. Because Brawl, I guess, was implemented badly in the sense that here it is on Magic on the Gathering Online, and people on Magic on the Gathering Online aren't playing for the fun of it. They're Casuals the are competitive, and 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 the thing is, is that yeah, they're playing for prizes. That's the point. You want prizes. That's. A, a, a huge part so of it. I'm a great it. believer that you should never play. You should try not. Okay, I'm not saying how other people should play, but yeah. I don't enjoy playing Commander or EDH for prizes. Sure, that's fair. That's because fair. Because the politics is already feel bad in Commander, right? The moment that you don't win that booster pack or that box or that cash prize or whatever, the feel sure. bads get even worse and the politics get even worse and it kind of destroys the, the, the spirit of the multiplayer experience in that sense. So I think multiplayer magic and 1v1 magic are so. It's, so different, so different. That's fair, that's so, yeah. fair. But I, 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 I think that this idea of self-regulation can only go so far. I mean, I'm an advocate of self-regulation in Commander. I say to everybody, I have I have like pre-con decks that have no or little to no upgrades on them in my collection. And then I have, have what we call like just your average Commander deck. It's not fully souped up. It's not finely tuned. It's it's like, what, what do you call it? Like a 70, 80% finished yeah, Commander deck. theory. Right. And then I also do have souped up, tries to win on, on turn three commander decks. And the thing is, is that you communicate with your play group and you say to your play group, what do you want to play tonight? Uh, uh, I, I've got my, you know, s my super powerful combo deck. Do you guys want to do some competitive EDH? Uh, if I'm sitting down with some some people who are just new to it, I'll pull out my, my pre-con. And that's fine because that's self-regulation. And I'm always an advocate of that. But there's only so far that you can go. Because at a certain point... And with a finite point, card pool as well. With right. With a finite card pool, like... Like with with Commander, you can have someone who will sit down and play. They, they will find their niche and their fun in playing the tribal deck. They'll be like, "Oh, I'm playing tribal vampires." Right. Or another guy will be like, "I'm playing coin flip dot deck." But when you get to the finite card pool of standard, those that that leeway for creativity, that, so that, that that flex room for creativity just isn't there. So people there is also the same yeah. strategies and the same cards. There's also a big difference between having a crappy 
commander vampire tribal deck where even the crappy vampires that you're running in it are really fun and interesting where they still have rules text and it's like oh cool mm. Sengir Nosferatu that turns into the bat and the bat turns back into him is a trash card but it's fun in vampire yeah. tribal and commander and if everybody else is on a similar power level that's fun but the reason why you're getting that fun is I'm playing with this weird old card and in Brawl we have such a it's like in Brawl you have a 2-1 vampire with flying at, that costs four or something like that and it's like okay yeah, draft it's chat, not the, draft right and, and so it's the not the thing. same level of enjoyment like yes sing your nosferatu stinks out loud but i'm but me doing some kind of like oh i'm a bat oh, blah i'm you know <laughs> it's like like i'm having and then i've got <laughs> Is that is that how you uh, get the enjoyment out of your EDH? Just to uh, yeah, that, play in character. I actually yes, that is exactly. You, uh, I, the, do, the, I do. I do play EDH in the character. I, I do, do you, play. Do you dress up? Do you wear capes? I do not wear capes. Uh, no, I, I dress up. Oh, right. I'm already in cosplay, dude. That's the next evolution. That's the next step. That is has a cape. And what so you can get money? Yeah. They can sell a box, and the box topper is different paraphernalia that you can dress up <laughs> in. Official wizards ones, like like vampire capes and. And dinosaur hats. I'm not. I'm not ready to monetize LARPing. <laughs> I'm not ready to monetize LARPing. Oh, in Magic the Hasbro. Are. Even if wizards aren't Hasbro. Are. Yeah, yeah. The capes <laughs> will fall apart in two days. Um. Anyway, so, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but. Uh, do you see the point that I'm making there is that you can st and then building and drawing on that large card pool even with a bad commander deck or a less let's just say less optimal one is a lot more fun than in, in standard where it's such a limited card pool if you're going to do tribal vampires or something then it's all like well we're drawing from Ixalan and basically what you've got is it makes tokens the tokens are 1-1 one, one life link there's one or two kind of interesting ones but it doesn't have that same flavor and it's going to get mm -hmm. stale fast Fast, and then it rotates <laughs> into yeah, into the new stale, 100%. you know, and that's, and that's the, the thing. Yeah. Like, I, I I I enjoyed Paul for what it was, which was like a flash in the pan, different thing. So I like I made a Moldrotha deck, and we found right. a video for my channel, and we had a bit of fun there. But then I was like, well, this doesn't feel like sustainable fun. Like the next no. ep the next video of Commander I make, I, I've, I've, I've it's infinite combinations of infinite exciting things to do. But Brawl, I was like, well, there's a couple of other legendaries that are kind of right. exciting, but then most of the staples are the same. So. You're just playing a worse version of another deck or a, a slight pivot on another deck and you're like, well, that, that that's Brawl for now. But I was thinking as it rotated, it could be fun to come back to now and again, but the, the that, that's for me making content with access to the cards on a digital platform. If you're going down the shop to play this, do you really want to rotate and change your Brawl deck every couple of months? Yeah, and that's yeah. the other thing too. I mean, I've got right in front of me on my desk, I've got three or four commander decks that I haven't updated uh, uh, in years, and I can pull it out and play with you right now, even though, I, I, you know, yeah, there's a better green ramp card than a couple of the ones in, 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 in whichever deck over here, but I can build the deck, play with it, put it on the shelf, and a year later pull it out and play with it again, and I don't have to disassemble the entire deck. Sure, there's new cards that I can put into this deck to make it better, which is great, which is why I'm still interested in new sets and such, but I want to keep my deck. I identify with my commander. I identify with what I've built. It's like my building. I don't want to tear it down every year. In some ways, that's a, that's actually quite a good segue because it kind of shows that Brawl and the, the idea of postmodern as a format or whatever it ends up being called right. and the idea of Brawl aren't the same because Brawl actually removes that eternal put it in a drawer, put it out, let it down the line and play with it again, well, which Legacy and Modern can have to an extent despite its changing metagames and things. Yeah. Where, where Brawl doesn't have that, but Postmodern in theory would have that. You'd still have the same postmodern deck, subject to bans, of course, when they ban cards. Sure, so, you know, or or the meta system. changes, and then it's like, hey, I built fairies, and two years later, it's like that deck just cannot win ever since you know the the new set came <laughs> but, out. But I'm a great believer in still giving it a go, right? Me play, too. Play, well, I, hey, I play I Merfolk, play so of... you know, I play Merfolk. <laughs> So, I know, and I curse you for it. Yes. But th but that is interesting. They are similar in the sense they're giving us new ways to play, but one of them should secure our fun for the future, and the other one forces us to buy more standard packs. Right. <laughs> and the other thing is, is and this is going to be, I'm going to do my final comment on Brawl, and I apologize uh, to anyone that is a Brawl fan. Uh, I, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. I am just talking about my thoughts on the format, and so is Vince. But I, I do want to say my final thought on Brawl is that word force. And it felt 
as though Wizards of the Coast was really forcing Brawl. They introduced it, people tried it out, and then it was fading away really fast. And nobody yeah. was playing it on Magic Online. They, Wizards didn't even put it on Arena, which is such a, a weird thing. Uh, uh, there were all kinds of, you know, like Brawl events at, at Channel Fireball GPs and such that, that there was that one. Didn't, didn't one person win because no one else showed up? Yes, exactly. And there were plenty of <laughs> others with very few people there. They, they did. Uh, a, a brawl championship and it was you know i believe dead last in terms of the the legacy championship the popper championship the modern championship and the standard mm -hmm. championship you know and 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 so but and yet all formats that you can grow attached to your deck and continue to play right the exact opposite right the exact opposite but and then yet at the same time wizards is doing all these mothership articles it's they, they were contacting creators not me but they were contacting other creators uh, and giving them you know, like like encouragement to do brawl content and things like that, and and they were just really, basically, putting on the the mom and dad pants and being like, come on, kids, play, play, play with this toy, play with this toy. And even though people weren't that interested in it, they were really pushing it past the public's interest. Writing up, it was the it was the equivalent of your parents buying you an Atari Jaguar for Christmas when you bought a Nintendo sixty four. Exactly, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Play, play, play it, play but, it. Uh, I'll just play it for an hour, that. right? And and I think <laughs> that that also really soured people because you know, and I'm I'm going to use the comparison to m one of my favorite formats, Popper, which is one that gets no mothership support. They never write articles on Popper. They never do paper Popper events. They don't even have Popper on Gatherer. They don't even have mm. a, a, a paper Popper ban list. All of this stuff. And, and Popper is incredibly popper you uh, it, it, The events at GPs were getting huge record numbers and still are. Uh, you, you got a standing ovation in England, didn't well, you? I, I, that, was a little, that was embarrassing. <laughs> uh, I wish you didn't bring that up. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, that was very embarrassing. I will always bring it yes, up. Okay. I will always bring it up. But, but, I was watching you. I, was, saw, but, I could see you from the table. That event, it was, oh, that was over 200, I think we had 200 and, 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 and 50, 60 people at a GP side event. You know, Channel Fireball loves Popper and they're doing, you know, any GP you go to has got popper side events going on every day, uh, uh, popper fire on demand at TurboTown, all that stuff. But Wizards won't even write an article. They won't even put it on Gatherer. And then with Brawl, think, it's I like they're so. shoving it in your face face and 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 again the two are very different there's no you can support both and i'm not saying don't support brawl but i'm saying that it creates this vibe it just creates this vibe of we'd rather you didn't play with this play with this and then it's like well but we're playing with this why don't you support us playing with this and i i feel that wizards is really intent on dictating how we enjoy their game as opposed to looking at how we enjoy their game and responding to that and if they looked at how we enjoyed their game then maybe they would have given a little extra thought to better put multiplayer in arena because it looks like people like multiplayer um you know i agree with you a lot there brian because the, the whole thing with brawl and uh, to an extent of what's going to come of some sort of postmodern format i think it will only come because originally the push for frontier was from like other game stores that i think were just trying to sell their product essentially right sell their their have you heard of the term rotato have you heard of that term before rotato uh, so it's a potato it's a car that is right. absolute trash yes no I, I mean rotating out no i mean I've, i i I, bl I i thought that was a term that uh uh, uh loading ready run coined in some episodes oh, oh was it oh, well I that's where i first that. i listen i get all my news from loading ready run first and then <laughs> I and then heard, I, I saw it on uh, the twitter verse and reddit with regards to um uh, Frontier, but to be fair, they could have took it from LRR, LRR as well. So if I'm yes. if I'm not giving them credit where credit's due, I apologize. Sure, but, but yeah, Rotatoes. Frontier so for, Frontier, right? the Rotatoes, for. you know, format. It, it, it was just yeah, it was just shops trying to sell, sell that stuff. And now I feel like we're going to get that again. But instead of it being shops trying to sell the Rotatoes, it's going to be Wizards trying to not sell in the same way, but sell Arena because it will give people something to do with those. That cards that rotate out, much like Hearthstone has wild and standard. Right. Arena's going to have to have something very similar because come rotation, people are going to be quite upset that all these cards that they've been burning money on yeah. are now not sellable on the secondary market, aren't usable in modern, aren't right. usable in legacy, and just sit there in their in their virtual folders doing nothing. And, and, and wizards cards. can't wizards can't like redeem them because then there's no reason to buy new cards. Because if wizards said, "Great, all your rares turn into rare wild cards, all your mythics turn into rare mythics from the rotating out cards," then it's like, cool. I now have the new card. Like like it it, it would it'd destroy be the most, their. 
It would destroy the economy. economy. Exactly. They need to keep it in. The most player-friendly game out there, wouldn't it? They need to keep it. They need to keep it in. Uh, And so the only way to keep it in is to have a non-rotating format. But the question is, is a non-rotating format going to start with, I mean, they already have Kaladesh in there. They, It's not in there, but it's programmed. Are they yeah, going to go yeah. back? Uh, uh, this is the set that I've heard the most chatter about, is to go back to Magic Origins, that they might be secretly behind the scenes programming backwards, and that they might want Postmodern to begin with Why would you say Origins, Magic then? Origins. What, what do you think uh, the reason for that is? The reason is, is no fetches. They want it after cons. Of course. And, oh, okay, so straight after cons. Right, and okay. that basically cons showed them that fetches were were poison that that they were just like we can't everybody was sick of the shuffling and and when you you do a fetch and you're shuffling professionally that's where a lot of cheating can take place and it's it's it and, and also they become the most expensive cards because they're just must-haves or at least 100%. they're perceived I mean, by the public as must-haves and so yeah this, you don't play with fetches as well i guess you need to understand that for those that didn't play in that period of standard, fetch lands made mana bases just too good. Yeah. So if you have any lands with basic land types, fetch lands can fetch them. Right. And therefore, we had four color mana bases that meant everyone just played four color good stuff. And we saw that in Frontier as well. We saw the return of Jeskai Blue and Abzan Wet. Right. And well, that was the problem. Like, like uh, if, if Frontier had just picked, a lot of people say because people were interested in Frontier. And again, and it's still played. Uh, like I feel bad. I like like just in that I know people who love Brawl and 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 love. Frontier frontier and I've you know heard messages from these people about how hurt they are when I express how much I dislike these formats which I do I never heard anyone mad at me for disliking tiny leaders though that's the one like like <laughs> like I've I felt bad of the three. Like, I mean I have videos one. I have videos making fun of frontier and some people were like hey man that sucks I, that really hurts I really like that format and I'm like oh man I don't want to yuck your yum it, it's such a shame though really with frontier because the the one reason I want I like the idea of frontier is I got to play with dig through time or treasure cruise again in a format where they might be less degenerate <laughs> no. but then they're also in the same block as the fetch lands so right. it's, it's just as degenerate they shouldn't be in it. yeah and, and that's the problem and so uh, uh, people believe that Origins seems like a good point it's post fetch lands uh, and it's also a new design philosophy, I believe, where they became aware of those issues, where they understood that modern was 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 something people really wanted, but had problems. And so there's a lot of talk that they have been actually. So the problem is, is it was it was Harry Ruya that came up with Frontier in Japan, and they they didn't do any testing. They don't know what they're doing. They just picked it arbitrarily based on the stock that they had. But there's a lot of talk that Wizards is aware we need this format it needs to work it needs to not have the issues with modern and that they actually began putting that thought into the sets that they designed from origins forward of we are going to have postmodern and so a lot of people have actually been saying well what does postmodern look like in terms of uh, uh, origins forward when that comes around on arena if arena starts going backwards but only to origins I'm against it completely mm-hmm. what about you Vince um, I, think I hate it's it. Absolute, I hate the idea of it. But I think it's an absolute inevitability because because modern prices. The, the, there's a point now that top tier modern decks are expensive than some top tier legacy decks, even though the reserve list isn't a problem. And the only way that that can be fixed is for Wizards to either reprint on mass, which will upset a lot of collectors and upset in franchise players who've got all these cards. Oh no! Oh no! Or, oh no! <laughs> do you do you have this? Ex- you know what I'm doing here? I'm playing the world's tiniest violin. Oh no! <laughs> I'm going to upset the, the the collectors that have binders filled with scalding. Yeah, tarns. exactly. I mean, oh I mean, well, certain, that's certain, just... certain financially minded YouTubers will be upset. And I mean, what what could you do for that? But there will be players who are not even the ones who've got the binders full of like you know original dual lands and stuff. It'd be the that's, players who that's a real spend... that's a real frowny unfortunate from me to those collectors a real frowny unfortunate or an f <laughs> but, you as, as far but, as i'm concerned but aside from the collectors though what about the players who spent a thousand pounds on a modern deck and then it gets reprinted into oblivion the next uh, next month how do you feel about that sort of thing i mean it's it's it feels bad that feels bad but like yeah, that is a feel bad. but but it, like, it's I a mean, problem but okay them, but 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 then that. if we abandon the format then you've got a thousand dollar deck that nobody's playing with anymore so i don't think the format would ever be abandoned wizards abandoned legacy a long time ago and it still survived but then again, and then periodically they'll they'll throw it a bone and be like, we do look. There's a, there was a legacy GP. We we do care, honest, which they don't. Yeah. Uh, and modern <laughs> modern will be modern will be the same way. Modern yeah. will be the same way. And the the reason for this as well is that 
Um, and this is a, a belief that I, I hold true from things I've seen with my own eyes, messages I've seen people I've spoken to, that Wizards of the Coast be- have a much higher focus, and everyone can see this, on new players and new player retention, or at least new player milking, shall we say. Yes. So that... When it- Postmodern will inevitably have the same problems as modern exactly. as time goes on. Exactly. And, and sooner or later, and so here's what's going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen who are going to be complaining to me about how modern is broken and can't be fixed, the second they announce postmodern, MTG Finance supertypes are already speculating on it. They are already looking at Origins forward and saying, what is going to be a good card? Uh, uh, and, and the second they announce this and this is where you're going to say it's a conspiracy that was leaked it wasn't leaked they've been planning this for years uh uh and the second they do it it's going to be like okay uh uh liliana from origins jace from origins or whatever cards from origins forward you name them that are going to be super powerful in this new format that are going to become the tarmogoyfs the bobs the 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 noble hierarchs the whatevers of postmodern will immediately become 40 50 60 dollars uh, because they'll have and then you'll say they've been bought up they've been buying them so up they've been buying them up what you're saying is what you're saying is buy your mana bases now for postmodern is that what you're saying professor yes i well no you heard it no, you heard no, it no, here I didn't first say that. i didn't say that <laughs> there's no because then you're going to ha- no but the thing is is that <laughs> unless wizards has the ability to say these cards are going to be our core cards of the game. These are the cards that you need, like a mana base, you need to play the game. And so these are the cards that you need, and we're just going to always have them available. They're going to always be in, I don't know, like a core set a every core year. Set, perhaps, yeah, I was going to say. That sounds like the, then they're always the available. Then that can't the happen. Then it's like the check lands. But you know what? Like, at a certain point, you have to say these cards are always getting reprinted, and it does have to be the good cards. It, it just does. You, you need to reprint cards. It, it, the, you need to. It just needs to happen. <laughs> but the, the, but then we get we do get circumstances where people say things like Thoughtseize being reprinted in Theros was a mistake. Um, I'm thinking, was there any more recent reprints other than that that were considered? No, a, a no, mistake? no. And 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 Thoughtseize. That's the last one where they was yeah. like an experiment and they said it was just it was just too good. Yeah. Well, but I say, I said to hell with it. Like it was. I don't think it was too good. Like that, that format survived. The format after it survived. Like. Just, just reprint powerful cards. That, this is another argument for another episode, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Power creep. As a, as a legacy fan, I like to see the waxing and waning of power levels. I think it's okay to print powerful cards in standard. And why should those powerful cards have to be uh, brand new walkers that sell packs? Why can't they be the thought seizers of old or the swords of plowshares or your kitchen finxes? I know some of those are plain art specific, like finxes, but... Just put them into standard. Them I, into that's what I, I've been Perfect saying. That's what I've been saying. I, I, I've been saying that, listen, at least for right now, if fetch lands are needed to play in, in Legacy, if fetch lands are needed to play in Modern, and yeah, 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 there's a deck that doesn't run them. I know there is a deck or two that doesn't run them, but you know what I mean. No, there's, a, there's a good few. There's a good few, but yeah. If, if, that, if that is the thing then you need to make it, you need to just always be reprinting this. Be, and, and if you say, well, they're terrible, they stink, then why do you have them? Pick a side. P- either we have fetch lands and we reprint them so that people can play, or we don't have fetch lands. And so they're going to say, we're going to make postmodern no fetch lands. Okay, well, something else is going to take their place, and it's going to need to be reprinted. And you, you see it with standard all the time. You see cards reach obnoxiously high prices because... They're, they're, they're needed. It's supply right. and demand, right? So the pro- the price issue we've got with modern will come about with postmodern, and then we'll probably have a, it'll be cyclical. If, if if magic is still going in 15 years' time, if we're still making content in 15 years' time, who knows? There'll be other content creators saying, oh, I want to watch the podcast when I was 10 about by the professor saying that cars need to be reprinted, but they'll have the same issue then as they have now, because right. that's kind of how... that's I guess that's how a collectible car game works, unfortunately. Blame capitalism, Brian. That's what it is. Our, our seize, seize, capitalism. The, Yay, seize the methods capitalism. of production, right? right. Well, like we no, just... wait, that one isn't capitalism. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's the opposite of capitalism. We could do that. We could, we could, we could, we could stage a coup, Brian. Uh, okay. Stage a coup. This is my final comment on postmodern. <laughs> my final comment on postmodern is that everybody who plays modern, who is nervous about their cards going down in value, should recognize that uh, postmodern is worse than massive reprintings because it's going to take all emphasis from the mothership, from Wizards of the Coast, and for the larger population away from modern. Modern prices are are high because people are playing modern because there are modern events and modern pro tours and things like that. And as soon as it's postmodern pro tour, postmodern focus, postmodern events, then it's going to be 
you don't want modern to become the next legacy that's completely abandoned and then you are going to end up where modern events aren't firing at your local game store where there are sure always going to be some cards worth a lot but for the most part the format is just a stagnant one it's just floating there no one's playing it everybody's complaining about it you need to fix not abandon go in there and abandon and snaring bridge and blood moon and be done with it and you know what put some attention and some effort into cultivating that format and reprinting the cards for that format. That is what you want to do. Postmodern will end up having the same problems and then people will say, well, we need post-postmodern. We need new modern again, all of this. And then at a certain point, players will become fatigued. It'll be like rotation. And they're gonna say, I'm tired of, of, of investing $1,000. I just spent a thousand bucks on my postmodern decks. And now people are saying postmodern is broken because guess what? Okay. When you look at a giant swath of cards, people will break the format. People will, fi life finds a way. Magic players players <laughs> Well, Magic players say... <laughs> find a way. We will ruin it because that's what we do for fun, okay? So you have to accept and embrace it and just make the damn decks more affordable. But my, my final point is, I think there's a bit of hyperbole in what you're saying. I think oh, just a bit? Nature, just, yeah, just a tiny bit. Just a tiny I bit. Think, um, I think a, 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 um, a cyclical nature to the creation of formats isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Don't forget, like, modern hasn't been around forever. So, so another new format like that isn't necessarily a bad thing. But what we need to... The bit that bugs me is a bit what you touched upon is that Wizards will support the new things that sells packs. Right. Uh, and let the old thing die. And I think modern is being mismanaged quite badly. And in some ways that... Again, I sound such a conspiracy theorist. I'm not normally like this. But in some ways that helps them. Because if modern is perceived to be degenerate and not very fun, sure. it helps move people to the new format. And in reality, we need to unban Stoneforge Mystic and we need to unban Splinter Twin. Yeah. There's, there's my campaign promise for, for 2019 when I'm right. Magic President. But my, my, my final point is that I think, I, I, contrary to what you're saying, I think that this is an inevitability and it has to happen and it's not something we should all fight against, but we should also be very vocal about trying to get Wizards to support Legacy and support Modern and not just kill things off because it helps their bottom line because people like myself and you guys at home are passionate Wizards about Wizards wants formats. to dictate. Two, and this, no, this just brings us, I'm sorry to interrupt, I'm just saying this is what I said. Wizards wants to dictate how we enjoy the game. Modern was the most popular format and Wizards is like, no, we want to we want to sell packs. And it's like, okay, put Modern staples and in packs. And that's the most frustrating thing it's so it, modern is so popular in terms of like numbers on modo in terms of numbers at events uh gp coverage uh, the pro tour the latest see, pro tour see the these standard see these tour. box toppers from these box toppers from ultimate masters stick that in every booster box of standard oh uh, yes uh, you could get a box topper that has a goif in it you don't have to put goif in standard uh, also and make them all good make them 20 or 40 yeah not that well good, i mean not, uh, raging don't, ravine that's all right but you know yeah but no, no, raging ravine's fine but don't put don't put in your storing wild woods and your and hey your, listen if they were in standard box, if these that. were if these were in standard boxes i wouldn't even mind the spread if these were in standard boxes where one's a goif and one's a raging ravine that's fine if it's at no extra cost sure yeah it's no extra cost, because sure. then it's at, they at no extra the cost boxes. the boxes are 100 uh, but it's only at your local game store boxes are 100 yeah, bucks sure. you got a box topper in each one and the box topper has a modern playable or commander playable card f yeah you know f yeah yeah but, but the f the, stands but the price... for fun <laughs> fun yeah yeah it's imagine the point the prices will go up though if it isn't like that but that's right a, again another topic for another time all right perhaps. we are going a little over time on this and i want to talk about our third and final topic for this episode of Dies to Removal, which is Arena, but Wizards' attention on Arena, specifically this Arena advertising campaign, where they are spending, I'm going to say, a huge amount of money on advertising, but it is advertising by, in large part, tapping non-Magic content creators to create content about Magic the Gathering Arena. And I'm hoping that this is a, an interesting topic for our viewers, because it certainly is for us, because we are Magic the Gathering content creators, and so we're very interested in what's going on. Wizards is paying a lot of people who don't normally play Magic to play Magic, and with rare exception, honestly, from everything I've seen, if you are a Magic the Gathering content creator, big or small or in between, 
Wizards is not really doing much in terms of of wanting to to reach out to work with you in any capacity where they pay. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. They're they're very happy if you stream Arena. Listen, they're very happy if you stream Arena or 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 do videos on YouTube or podcasts on Arena. But they are spending advertising bucks, and they've pulled in some big names who I know cost big bucks, and. These are not Magic players, or they're people who played Magic and like it, but they don't regularly do Magic content or ever do Magic content. And now they're doing it. It seems to be working. Numbers are up. I mean, I maintain advertising is a good thing. And so, hey, look at this. Wizards actually advertises Magic. Numbers go up. That affects all of us. But also there's a weird feeling, which is... What about the people who back before you were getting these big numbers were streaming every day and are getting ignored or mostly ignored by you? What about people who were making magic content for free advertising for you essentially and now you've got this big budget for advertising and how much of that are you cutting off for the people who have the pulse of your player base? But you said, Vince, that you feel they don't care about established players I, I, as much. <laughs> as much. So they, I don't think they, they care about it as complete. I don't think there's a complete apathy between Wizards and uh, the player base. But I think they definitely care about getting new eyes into the product. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Like, I want Wizards to succeed. I want the games to succeed. Cause I, I want so Wizards to succeed. I, <laughs> I want mean, Magic to succeed. I mean, we're both now making a living off of making content about what Wizards makes. So if Wizards didn't do too well, it, it wouldn't do too well for us as well. But... What we see right. is that they're very happy to have uh, small, mid-sized, and larger content creators like yourself do things for free, but not pay them, which is fine. Which is, it's, it's fine, but they do spend their advertising budget in a different way, where they spend it on um, paying people who aren't even engaged with Magic in the slightest to then do things that to attract new eyes in. But it all seems a little bit, I guess, mismanagement is probably the, 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 the word of the day, mismanaged, because... The, the advertising budget seems weird, so they're cutting corners in some ways. So, for example, um, they used to send out to a lot of creators uh, sealed product, which is relatively cheap for them to produce, but it's still something right. that's a cost. They've now forgone that. So, as far as I understand it, sealed product was not sent out to anybody with regards to Guilds of Ravnica. Really? And as far as I understand, I didn't know I, that. I, I, I thought that was just. I thought that was just. You know, like I got the. I used to get a little bit. I was always yeah. like pulling teeth. They I didn't like I, sending it to I me. I would get pre-release but... kits and things like that, for example. But I, I oh, know. Really? From, I, yeah. So, so here's a here's a step behind the curtain that perhaps Wizards will slap me on the wrist and say I shouldn't have said. But as far as I understand it, creators didn't get any of that. Instead, they're invited to the yeah. the streamer event that happened, which was great. We all got early access to Arena and accounts to play on. With access to everything which is fantastic but that's free for them in essence there's very minimal right. cost there and instead of sending out sealed product they'll just give you gems to draft on arena instead which minimizes the costs there but then where do those where does that cost uh, saving go well it goes on paying people not engaged with magic to do um cosplay of it or or, or makeup tutorials of sure. it, or, or or to stream it if you normally play another card game and we know for a fact without saying any names a lot of cosplayers don't really get any recompense from wizards for giving so much time and effort to the game, so we don't we don't have to say any names. If you're a regular, I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I don't think anyone in Magic cosplay will get two, exactly. well, maybe one I mean, I one person. But other than yeah. well, other than, than than possibly one person in Magic cosplay, I, I don't know anyone who would get upset at me to say that if you are a GP regular, you you go out to Magic events and 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 Magic fests and conventions or whatever you want to call them now regularly, and we see them and all this stuff. You're you're not on Wizards payroll. You're you, maybe like Channel Fireball for for some folks yeah, is able yeah. to help out with 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 travel and accommodations to a certain degree, you know. But that's not Wizards, remember. But that Wizards is 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 occasionally for like an event or a thing, picking a few people, but. No, like there, there's all these creators who do advertising and, and help your product's image and get everybody excited about your game. Wizards is like, hey, thanks for the free stuff. Only they don't always say thanks for the free stuff. <laughs> and, and then they don't give you anything. Uh, 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 and, and so when you see that they, ta they, they tap a cosplayer who doesn't do magic cosplay and they pay her and she was, uh, I, I, I forget her name at the moment. Everybody knows who I'm talking about who did the Veraska thing. Mm -hmm. I'm in no way ragging on her. She's talented. That oh, was 100%. an amazing video. And I think it was smart of them to do, but it's like at the same time, hey, you know these cosplayers who for the last four years, five years have been going to every bloody event and and spending their own money to make all of these costumes to be Garrick and 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 Jason and Johnny and 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 every character in between maybe you you should have also said all right let's get 
this this lady uh, as she's really talented. She's got a huge following, and that's smart. I'm going to praise wizards. That's smart. Her viewers love her stuff, but they don't necessarily know magic. Well, that's the we thing. pay her. So, she does a magic video. They get excited about magic. That's see, freaking I, 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 smart. I've got but a throw to ferret a bone. Throw the the, the 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 guy in the Ajani costume at every bloody GP a bone. And 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 he <laughs> so, has a cosplay company. And and throw him a bone and say, hey, here's here's one one hundredth. I guarantee you, one one hundredth of what they paid her to do Vraska, if they gave him one one hundredth to do a new cosplay so, and film it, he would have fallen to his knees. I, I, I agree completely. So there's a moral element to this of just like, you know, endorsing the people that put the effort into advertising your game 100%. But I also right. don't agree on how smart some of their maneuvers have been. So getting, really? So getting Gwent players and getting Hearthstone players and those sort of people to play Magic, that kind of makes sense because those players may well jump ship to Magic, because some people are arguing that Arena finally shows Magic often in an area that people will actually engage with it, where they may know, never have done before, and enjoy it. But some of the advertising they do, um, may it'll put Magic into the popular consciousness, it'll make people aware of it, and it'll saturate the brand a little bit, but those people aren't going to click through and download Arena, those people aren't going to go buy any packs, they're going to go, oh, cool, cool Golgari, or oh, sorry, cool Gorgon or whatever, and then move on with their lives. And that, that ties similarly into the Pro Tour, recently. So, during the finals of the Pro Tour, there was a 10 or 15 minute break, for some reason. It might have been something behind the scenes needs to be sorted or changed. Fine. What did they do? They showed an arena advert, and they showed 10 minutes of a scoreboard, and then back to the game. And this is during the finals, this is during, what, 40 to 50,000 people are watching? And, yeah. I'm, and I'm just like, who there does not know of Arena or have it downloaded? Right. But why are you using that space and that time and that, that resource in a way that doesn't actually grow your brand in terms of uh, access or or um, uh, visibility? Because those things don't. So I don't think the way that advertising is actually that smart, if I'm honest. Um, other players of other games, yes. But everything else, they're just, I don't know, I just, I just laugh but whenever I see a magic apply that magic argument? Board. Can't you apply that argument to us, which is the premise of why should we, let's say, find money in the advertising budget to pay Vince or, yeah, well, yeah. God, I'm, I'm out of the picture because I, I fail their products, but... I, you, I say you, naughty you, words. You, you, I say you're, naughty you're, words. I'm not getting paid. Oh, uh, well, I think they choose <laughs> naughty words over over my naughty words but, of fail, you, don't buy but, this. But you're probably but, wrong. But, I think you're wrong. Anyway, anyway, like, right. but what I'm saying is this. Everybody who watches you already knows about Arena. Mm -hmm. Why would they pay you to advertise Arena? 100%. There's a logic to that, and I agree. I sure, agree. Sure. So, like, so perhaps like, I am. So I'm condemning my, our own argument here of like, you know, help your content creators wow. out. Perhaps that is true. But I guess there's a moralistic element. There's a business element. <clears> and I don't <throat> think it's right on either end of those things. I guess. But you are. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know that that's my argument because I'm going to be honest with you. I I view it this way. I, I honestly, I. There is a sadness that they are ignoring the people who spent their free time and energy and money uh, uh, and and built up all of these uh, uh, media systems of podcasts and vlogs and 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 everything to to just you know get other people. But honestly, I, I think them grabbing Hearthstone streamers and paying them makes a lot of sense. And mm -hmm. if more people are coming into Arena. Those people will come into Paper Magic as well, sure. not in as large numbers. And if more people are coming into Magic, that means more people are going to be searching on YouTube and 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 SoundCloud and Google for Magic content. And our numbers will the the ocean does go up. And so them paying these other people to to do Magic content other than us who are already doing Magic content can help us. Oh, 100%, and I like 100%. it. I just kind of wish that, and not for me, because I know why I'm, I can't be touched, but there's a lot of people who they can be touching. There's a lot of people in this community I love to who be are not, yeah, I, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we're all, there's no crime against being lonely, Vince, uh, but um, there's a lot of people in this community who are creators that, that really they could like I, I view it as throw a bone I view it as throw well, a bone it's positive PR where, as where, well it's, it's not necessarily where just like... look for an excuse look for an excuse when you got all the like like they should have a list of of the, the cosplayers who have been consistently doing cosplays and new exactly. cosplays and they should say find an excuse to throw a bone it doesn't mean you have to make them put them on the, the, the you know like the, the face of the advertising campaign it doesn't mean you need to pay them a fortune but you just have a little list on a post-it note and you say 
listen, is there an excuse where where we could maybe find a way to 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 and they do a little bit. I don't want to like I don't want to, you know, like have them screaming at me, "Hey, there was this this convention and whatever and we paid four of these cosplayers to go to it and 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 they got really good treated well and I and, and that's true. That happens a couple times, but you know, I think they can extend that and expand on that. And I think they can expand it to some of the streamers who have been, I think we heard like a lot of some of the big names in streaming didn't even get a phone call. I don't want to start naming names, but there were some of the big MTG streamers that just, you know, weren't even that's what considered for a, some of the push. There's a, yeah. There's a PR exercise there. So I guess my counterpoint now, but I think about it. Uh, when you said like similar to you saying perhaps not endorsing myself or you or other content creators are already making the content because it's not getting new eyes that's I guess where I'm saying there's there's a disconnect for me like there's goodwill with your player base right we all know that magic players like to complain and moan about stuff so why not make little little Timmy Timmy Legacy go oh look they're endorsing my my favorite Legacy streamer yeah or they no, that makes a lot bone. of sense that 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 shows other people that Oof. they're willing to help with Legacy and modern and well the they, they need to put Legacy they need to put Legacy and modern on arena first but that's another topic. <laughs> Well, yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, I would, I would love that. I would love some nice, cool animations as I blow up people's lands. It'd be fantastic. Oh, yes, yes. Maybe no, and day. I hear you. I hear you. It's it's a tough topic. Uh, I, I feel like I feel like they just need to... I, I feel like they're not doing anything that none of their actions are wrong. Like, I am not going to say... Some people said, like, like hey, you shouldn't be, like, you know, putting attention on, on, on these Hearthstone streamers. I disagree. Put the attention yeah, on the Hearthstone yeah. streamers. Some people were were upset at uh, the cosplayer they hired, and they're like, "She doesn't do magic cosplay. You're probably giving her an enormous amount of money." I say, "That's great. Do more of that." I just think that do more action as well to your own garden. You have a garden of people that are organic creators. So when you, I, I, so your organic. Well, we, can expand that to, we can expand that to professionals as well. They can't be, because th think, think of the recent oh, controversies. Oh God, that's a whole other topic. Uh, it is another topic, but, it, but it's Pay very close to tied. It's very close Hashtag. to tied. Because if you compare, so professionals and content creators are both free advertising, right? And they're both yeah. um, um, ambassadors for your game and they're hopefully promoting a positive community and an inclusive community and, and just improving the general atmosphere around your game. So to them be like, well, actually, for silver showcases, this I don't agree with, and they're like, oh, we're just going to invite uh, just random uh, a Maz. Yeah, like, no, that was a disaster. And, and the thing is, again, he he's he's great, and I really like him, but that's probably not where you should be doing with the silver showcase of all things. So yeah, so it, it's it, pros and content creators are kind of in this together in the sense that they should be helping those people to well, especially professionals. If they're professionals, help them be professionals. Treat your esport right. like an esport. But however. Next time we make a recording, or in a couple of weeks' time, actually, we might we might have an announcement discussed because there's an esports announcement coming up, isn't there? On the sixth, there is. I believe. There so is. Perhaps this will all be old hat, and I'm like, you know what? We're going to support those pros. Who knows? Who knows? My my final my final thing on this is that I, I I think that any content creators or potential content creators in Magic that feel upset at the money going to non Magic regulars uh, should realize that that that's still money going to promoting content in magic and that it does like when people are done watching that video, they might come yeah. to yours. And 100%. and that's why I've never, you know, and so don't, don't start. It's not an either or ah, that's what I want to say. Any creators watching this, it's not an either or you can support the non magic people that wizards is supporting to bring people into magic, but wizards can find some scraps on the plate to toss to their actual actual organic creator base other than me of course but the other people who play nice you know uh you can toss those scraps and throw some support is all i'm saying is is you can do a little bit more send some product uh uh uh, uh find excuses for for people who you can you know put them on co you know coverage or have them make little contents for coverage it's so expensive and hard to make this content these days find an excuse to throw a couple of bucks their way for for buying some of their content for, for official uses or consultations or find a reason to support the body of organic work that you have and also spend the money on bringing other people into the game. It's good for everybody. What, That's what, my what, final. What, what I'd add yeah. on top of that is that, again, uh, the people who might be frustrated with the way that con their favorite content creators treated or how their mass content creators feel is that um, 
yeah, it's not it's not competition in terms of YouTube, but even places like Twitch where you're competing for time. Just think of where those right. view, think of where those viewers are going after the video because people people will watch uh, a Hearthstone stream or a Gwent stream or play Magic, but after right. the person finishes streaming, those click throughs will go to other Magic content or other Magic streamers. So it's not all doom and gloom. It's not all bad, even if you disagree with it. It still brings. Uh, new eyes or, or, or new interests. How, the how about we how, now? I'm not a big. You're. Let me. Th I want to throw this idea by you in closing. Then okay. uh, uh, I'm going to pitch an idea to you. So a lot of like I know Twitch. I, I don't actually like. I'm going to start streaming on Twitch a little bit again. But I'm not. I'm a YouTuber, not a Twitch streamer. But I do know Twitch a bit, and uh, I know how rough it is when you've got 20 people active in watching you 40 even even 80 or any under 100 even 100 can feel bad but certainly 20 30 you know you're struggling you just want to get noticed and then they're like hey we're going to take this already successful hearthstone streamer and pay him or her to to stream magic and, and you're like you, it feels bad feels bad so what if wizard said oh by the way you know uh and i don't want to name names so by the way hearthstone x streamer uh when you're done with our thing what we'd love is 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 if you picked out a magic streamer right. who is not right who is not hashtag sponsored what we'd love is if you could pick out someone who is not hashtag sponsored anyone you like and 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 hit a raid that's how you close is you raid someone who is not hashtag sponsored uh, yeah. uh, and and they've got so many hashtag sponsored people, and if they just said, eh, 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 "There's nothing wrong," that would be great. And then everyone would be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." If I had, you know, like this person with 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 three thousand people watching raids me, that could be my big break. And 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 suddenly there'd be different feels. It's just that's what I mean by scraps. That is a scrap. That is the least you can do. And 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 it can mean so much. My favorite thing about when I was Twitch streaming is, and I wouldn't even get huge numbers and stuff. I'd, 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 I'd maybe get like 300 people in. I, I mean, would love at the people end, I the, love. Under Magic, by the way, that's that's like, you're like top, you're top three, top no, four. There, no, like. no, no, no. Like, uh, uh, Caleb D, Jeff yeah. Hoagland, so, Kenji, so, all so those guys get, about to name get like the top way five. bigger numbers. Yeah, they get thousands, yeah. they get thousands, surely do. But, once but anyway, but those, my point is, is, is I would love, I, and when I started up again, I love, it's just, it's like, all right, I'm closing out. I want to find someone who's got 20, people watching that I that that is putting in a good effort and 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 be like here you go it, it's it's a raid I love it I I, I love yeah, that I sort of to stuff. I was trying to send on to um smaller streamers or people that I know that right. you know if they've only got a couple of people in their chat you. That's what I mean by scraps. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. All right, so that I think that's a, a good point to close for our viewers. What topics would you like to hear us discuss on dies to removal? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed my co-hosts uh, co-hosting once again, Vince, where can they find you? I'm going to put the info there. But Vince, where are you? So if you have enjoyed me uh, occasionally trying to get a word in edgeways with our, our wonderful professor here, you can find me at Pleasant Kenobi on YouTube. Um, that's just forward slash Pleasant Kenobi. I make modern legacy. Uh, limited, all sorts of gameplay and silly videos, memes. People know me for memes, J meme jokes about reduke playing against bees and all sorts. Also, Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter. I like to respond to stuff on Twitter. Again, it's Pleasant Kenobi. And again, Facebook, Instagram, Pleasant Kenobi. So I'm Pleasant Kenobi was, everywhere, really. Was I was I interrupting you a lot? Oh, no, not at all. I was more making. I was, I was <laughs> making you not said, interruptions. So I, I've had that. Not, I've had not, that criticism <laughs> lobbed at me from other things that I um, interrupt I guess a lot. I, I hope I wasn't. I hope I wasn't well, professor explaining you. Yeah. You're, 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 well, professor if you, could you let me finish? You 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 just interrupted my joke. You just interrupted my sorry, joke. Sorry. Sorry. Would you like to finish your joke? Go on. Thanks, Brian. My um, joke was that. Ah. Uh...